Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, lure painting. I'm going to paint this uh, 5 inch glide bait. And we are going to be painting it a shed color. Uh, some kind of shed pattern. I have an idea. I've already got all my stuff laid out. I will warn you ahead of time. You might hear the good old air compressor kick on here and there. But that's just part of it. Uh, but anyways, we're going to get into this and I hope y'all enjoy. I am painting this lure right here for my good old buddy, uh, foul mouth fishing. If y'all ain't checked out his channel, y'all ought to. He does a pretty good channel himself. Uh, he's just like me, a good old boy, uh, doing stuff on YouTube. So anyways, if uh, y'all like this kind of content, be sure to like subscribe comment let me know what y'all think so we're gonna get into the first thing first i've already got it painted white now i'm gonna go over it with silver so we can get that shad silver color and i'm gonna use pearlized silver i've got this set up on about 20 psi and we're gonna just cover this whole bait Silver is probably not going to show up very well on here. Y'all probably won't be able to notice the difference that much, but you'll be able to tell once the bait's finished what it looks like. You should be able to start seeing the shine. And just so you know, you'll be able to see the finished product of this, like with the hooks and all on his channel. Because like I said, I'm sending this to him. And uh, he didn't ask for it. I just kind of offered it to him. Just trying to be nice. I like doing this stuff, so... But anyways, I'm going to finish up this uh, part right here, and then I'll get back with y'all. Alright, so here we are. We're back now, and I think y'all should be able to see the nice silver coat. Uh, so now what we are going to do is we are going to wrap this up with this uh, netting material that I have. Uh, always make sure you heat set your bait before you do anything like this because if not all you're gonna do is smear the paint so I'm gonna wrap this up and then I will be right with you all alright so now you'll see that we've got it wrapped up for the most part you always want to try to make sure you get this as tight as you can uh, that way whenever you release it and stuff, it don't just like make different patterns everywhere. It's kind of hard to do with a jointed bait like that because one side wants to set up and one side wants to go the other way. But we're just going to basically be covering this little part right here anyway. So, uh, just to kind of give it some scale pattern look to it. And I'm just going to go about halfway down. And I'm going to hit that with the black. We're not going to worry about the head part because I want to leave that alone. And uh, 
we're going to do that and that will give us a scale pattern so let's hit some uh, black in here and I'm just using a uh, createx opaque black nothing special Just want to basically kind of make sure you uh, get it kind of even going down the lateral line. However, however far you want to go down, you ain't got to do it exactly as I'm doing it. But you know, you just want to kind of make sure it's even on both sides. Uh, that way, whenever you pull it off, it'll look kind of the same and all that good stuff. Even what I did is I followed the eyes and I went right down with the eyes, so it should be good. Alright, I think we are good to go. So we'll heat set that we'll do this. Eric and blow dryer. this we should have some little spots <clears throat> always remember once you heat dry it give it a couple of seconds before you pull it off that way it has time to, for the paint to dry because if not like I said you're going to end up having a bunch of smeared paint and also make sure to watch out for the the netting that you're using because some of that that's made out of plastic won't dry and all the paint that's underneath it'll be wet and you'll go to move it and it'll just smear all over the place. I think this is ready. Oh yeah. And that's right there is what you end up with. You'll get them pattern. And see it has, I uh, kind of went with the shadow down here. That way some of the scales will be like kind of shadowed in the back. So, I'll tell you another thing. If you ever feel like it's not dry, 
too dry after you get done like if it kind of feels sticky just go ahead and blow dry it again just to make sure Just a little bit of water, put it in there, just kind of bubble it back out. Take your ghetto rag, wipe out the inside of your bowl. You always want to make sure you get as much of that paint out, that way it don't mix with any of your colors. Unless sometimes, like if you're just coming in with it behind another color that kind of matches it, and you just uh, want to make it darker or lighter or whatever, sometimes you can leave that in there and just kind of mix it in with your other paint. do is I'm going to go over it with this color on the top and around the side a little bit. Uh, this is a like a pewter blue that I've made and uh, one thing that you'll always know that you should know is metallics will show up better on the top of black so that's why I see like right there I have a uh, I went with the black instead of the blue first because you know normally you want to go with lighter to darker colors but with uh, anytime you're doing like a metallic color uh, put your darker color down first because the uh, metallic colors show up better on the top see actually whenever I did this bait I should have did it black and then went over it with the pearl silver and it would have actually showed up a lot more silvery but I think it's actually going to show up real good the way it is. I think it's going to look more shad-like. So, anyway, so now we're going to paint this bad boy with that pewter blue. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. pretty color. It's almost like a pewter gray. See what I'm talking about. See, and we're gonna hit it with another coat. And uh, in between coats, you always want to make sure you dry. And I'm gonna come down the side a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So let's hit it again. Looks like I'm gonna need some more.
And all I did was uh, took some uh, pearl silver and pearl blue and a couple of drops of black and some white and mixed it in and that's what I come up with. It almost looks like a, a sexy Strike King color. Oh yeah, now it's really taking over. Good deal. I'm just going to come down the sides a little bit, kind of blend it off that back. And it'll kind of fade in the background. And I like that. Yeah, I like the way that color turned out. That turned out really good. More color in the head and the front. And towards the gill plate. That's why I told you you didn't really want to go with the, the black all the way up to the gill plate because I was going to color that in with the blue anyway. And I think we are looking good. Got that sexy shed going on. Uh, so instead of wasting this paint, I'm just going to keep on uh, coloring in until I run out. That way I ain't got to waste it. Sorry if the compressor is loud. So now I'm going to clean out my bowl and then we're going to switch colors. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, Create Text uh, Wicked uh, Crimson. And I'm just going to color in right up underneath that lip. I'm going to color it in red. You ain't gonna need much, so just put a couple of drops in there. That way you don't waste very much. And basically you just wanna do that right there. We're gonna make it bright red. You know what? No, I'm gonna leave it just like that. Uh, might need to come around to the side. There you go. So now that we've done that, what heat set that? Now 
and so now we are actually done with the air compressor so I think what we are going to do is actually I want me to do it is uh I'm actually going to take and put some red on these gill plates and uh so what you're going to want to do is take you and get you something to lay it on and always make sure your hands don't have any kind of wet paint on there because if you do your bait's going to let you know alright so now what I'm going to do is take this little dude right here it's like a, I don't know what they call, but it, anyways, you find them in the painting area. It's like a little Q-tip, and I'm basically just going to dip it in my red paint, and I'm just going to trace the outside line of that gill plate. There up there is basically all you're going to do. That way you'll have, it gives it a little detail. When you're done with that, you just flip it over to the other side, do the same thing on the other side. And then you just take and take these and rinse them off real good. That way you can reuse them. And save that bad boy for later. So now we are officially done with red. See, so now you got some more detail on there. Looks like, you know, it might be bleeding out of the gill plate. Or... And last but not least, other than putting the clear coat on, is to add the eyeballs. So I've got some eyes here. That I'm going to add to it. And I like to use uh, the Loctite soft gel because it gives you time to put it on there without it drying too quick. I mean, it dries quick, but not too quick. So 
then take you a little something, something. Push it down with. And then do the same thing to the other side. Like I said, it don't take a whole lot of it. And we are done. And that's what it looked like. Anyways, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and like I said, if you want to see the finished product after the gloss coat and stuff like that, be sure to check out Foul Mouth Fishing, and it will be on there. Thank you for watching, and if you like this kind of content, please leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, and let me know.